Hai teman-teman, ini saya malam mingguan di New York dengan Mareresa yang kalian pasti kenal ya Pemenang Nobel Perdamaian 2021 Kemudian pendiri Rappler, saya pernah bekerja bareng sama Maria Dan sekarang dia banyak di New York karena mengajar di Columbia University Tapi tentu saja around the world ya dan dia kemarin pidato yang luar biasa di uh, UN uh, GA80 ada sesi yang khusus tentang uh, AI ya tentang AI. Nah, jadi saya mau mengisi malam minggu kami di New York dengan bertanya soal AI red lights yang dia uh, kampanyekan di uh, sesi UN GA. Uh, bentar ya. Hai, say hi. Yes. Selamat, malam. Selamat malam ini malam ya Selamat yeah, malam yeah. Masih ingat Ayam Soeharti? Oh my gosh, I miss <laughs> Oke, okay, let's Your UN speech you propose the importance of AI red lines What I do and why is it urgent? Okay, so first of all, we have to have learned our lesson from social media AI, right? Mm -hmm. The artificial intelligence that was rolled out that is really used for micro-targeting, right? All of us have a digital clone on these platforms and AI takes all these clones and that becomes the master load, the master database for micro-targeting, mm. right? Yeah. So that's called um, uh, losing your agency, right? So, and Indonesia knows this as well as the Philippines. So we need regulations, not just for generative AI, the the new, this new, like, what is it? The darling of the investment world. So much has been invested in it, but even now, all the founders are saying that they're taking a risk, mm. right? And humans are paying the price for it. So, um, at the UN, we launched uh, AI red lines. Mm. What are the red lines that you shouldn't cross for this? Meaning, put it in the service of humanity. Don't have humanity be in the service of the machine. But there are other examples that we've used um, the weekend before we were at the Vatican. Mm -hmm. um, and we actually came up with a declaration of some of the principles that need to be there. Okay. Can you give example what should be regulated? I mean, you yeah. say that regulis, uh, regulated yeah. uh, AI doesn't mean jeopardizing the, the, the freedom of speech. Correct. But it's for humanity, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. this is not a free speech issue, right? Yeah. Because your crazy uncle can still say whatever they want to say. You just don't <laughs> want to see it be the front page headlines. Yeah. Right? So we yeah. know by design that these that social media spreads lies faster than facts. That hmm. it spreads virally fear, anger, and hate. Hmm. So as a safety measure, not just for the kids, because hmm. there have now been a lot of reports of the impact on this. So the first is... You have to regulate what feed is being is being brought up. Right? Mm. So, for example, who says lies should spread faster than facts? Why should lies spread faster? If if the tech companies were news organizations, they would be legally liable for mm. that, right? Mm. So, stop treating these tech companies like they're not publishers. Mm. That's the first step. They need to be accountable for what they spread. Mm. Right. Um, two, it's not a speech issue. Anyone can say what they want to say, but they cannot, for more money, use surveillance capitalism to keep us scrolling. Mm. Right. That's where it hacks our biology, and that's where they use. We are hijacked by algorithm, right? Correct. And they pump us full of. In the Nobel lecture, I called it toxic sludge. Mm. Right. Online violence is real world violence. They, like journalists, should be responsible for the spreading of violence, mm. right? Mm. We know this. Um, Meta and the UN and genocide in Myanmar, uh, the UN itself actually said, Marzuki Darusman, yeah. he was the head of the UN group that went there that said that Facebook enabled this mm. genocide, right? Mm. Meta had its own report coming up with similar Similar results, but it's so interesting that now that report, I can't find it anywhere except in my computer because there are cases that have been filed against Meta against this. So, so safety measures, right? Put safety measures in place. S Australia are stopping 16 years old and below. They're yeah. preventing them from going on social media. 
about, right? And that's actually not a bad thing. It's like alcohol, right? There's an age limit. Let's talk about generative AI because in the UN, I talked about impunity. Yeah. These big tech companies are stealing all of our content with impunity. Mm. They've killed copyright laws. They're using what you create, what we create, and they're making us pay for them stealing it because there are so many um, of these scrapers on our website mm. that we're paying for them to steal our content, right? This should be illegal. Yeah. Many yeah. news organizations have already challenged this in court in the United States, but who knows what will happen. Yeah. To set the boundaries for AI? Well, we're trying a whole lot of different ways, right? Mm. The UN now and Kenya led this. This is what I like is that the Global South mm. is actually pushing for these boundaries because we're the ones who suffer the most from this. We clean up the mess of LLMs, right? Mm. So that the North can use it. Um, we have the AI red lines. Please take a look at it. If you yeah. believe in the same thing, go. Like, it just draws a red line that says mm. countries should come up with mm. a common safety measure. And then at the very least, they should say what AI can never do. Right? Mm. Um, the second of uh, the Vatican has this uh, this doc declaration that was done by scientists. Mm -hmm. This is Joshua Bengio, Jeffrey Hinton. All of these scientists came up and that is also there. That's been given to the UN. The UN itself, which Kenya started, has two new groups, the global a global group that which I was part of on AI. Mm -hmm. Every country has a seat at the table. And then the second one are a group of scientists, very similar to what the Vatican did. We don't have time to yeah. talk about this anymore, right? Because it's already out publicly. I like the Indonesian phrase, NATO. No, NATO, no action, action talk, talk only. On. We need you to know, get out of that. According to the president, Omon Omon, like NATO, right? Like tribal war. Right? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, in the virtual world, mm -mm. right? Because there's only one of us in the physical, one you. Hmm. You're in both the physical and the virtual world. We have these laws set in place already. They hmm. should be implemented, hmm. right? Which means for Indonesia, part of what gives these big tech companies impunity is something called the Section 230 of the 1996 Communications Decency Act. Get rid of it. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, hmm. Because in the end, if you treat the tech companies like publishers, they will be accountable. Hmm. I think that's the main part, is to stop the impunity, to reclaim our humanity, and to restore rule of law. Hmm. Okay. What should the media do, given the role of tech giant in the media content distribution is still dominant, and yeah. not all media yeah. have the capability like Rappler, for example, yeah. to create their own independent distribution platform? Yeah, so I think every media owner, every news organization needs to understand that we need to demand better from our governments, hmm. right? That these laws that we live under should be applied to tech companies, number one. Number two, the internet itself is changing. The architecture is changing, right? Hmm. You, you'll notice when you type Google search that you're not gonna get a new site's link anymore. Which means that the structure, the internet as we know it, is dead and something new is coming up. The only way we will survive this is if we do something, I call it radical collaboration. Mm. We need to find an open source, end-to-end, -end, um, encrypted. I mean, our solution is the Matrix Protocol chat app. I'd love you to look at it and, and see, we just tomorrow are bringing in six more news organizations in the Philippines. Mm. It would be great if Indonesia comes in. And this is something, we built it, but it is free, right? Because it has to be. That's what we're fighting against. But what we're after is integrity of facts, mm. right? Anyone can say anything as long as the widest distribution, the distributor of it, is legally accountable. That will stop the lies from spreading faster. We are in the week of UNGA 80. Yeah. 
and there are a lot of big question about whether UN still is relevant, relevant, yeah. and also the, the the attitude of US, yeah, as the, the usually the the main contributor to support all of the uh, UN uh, operational and also uh, uh, the the organization under UN is also kind of like yeah. diminishing. So, do you think that for this AI governance? UN can uh, meet the expectation because uh, I mean most of the giant tech Come is uh, coming from UN and you, you see the viral video where all this the owner the big yeah. giant tech kind of like sit together with the president and yeah. praise them what they do as <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah yes what do you think am I looking at you or the camera Camera. Camera. Camera, okay. okay. Um, let's say we have to do what we've always done, Uni, which is prepare for the worst, but hope for the best. Right? This is UN 80. UN at its 80th year. 80 years ago, the UN stopped humanity from destroying itself and put in place the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Yeah. The virtual world needs to have the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. It's not there, mm. right? Um, so I'm hoping that these multilateral initiatives, one led by Latin America, Brazil, Chile, Uruguay, and Spain, 20 nations coming together around information integrity. In fact, Indonesia should join, like the Philippines. Yeah. We need to we need to come up with new multilateral initiatives. If the UN can't move as a whole, mm. what about the smaller parts coming together in new ways? I think this is an opportunity for Southeast Asia, for the global south, to lead. So the question is, what would we do as leaders, right? Um, on Wednesday, Democracia Siempre had 20 nations coming together that included Australia, yeah. right? I'm hoping that becomes, this becomes a period of creation. That, that, I mean, you saw this in the speech. I think it's crisis times. Yeah. If we don't do this now, the world, I mean, we could destroy ourselves, right? Yeah. So the UN has... Oh, here's the other part that was fascinating. Annalena Baerbach, who's president of yeah, this UNGA, uh, actually chose four women, along with the Secretary General, to open on Monday, which was, you know, I loved it. I loved it. And she said, when Secretary General Antonio Gutierrez leaves next year, that she is pushing for a woman. Wow. And there are several Hopefully. women leaders that are there, right? So... Indonesia has had a women leader. The Philippines has had two. Mm. Right? The United States has not. Yeah. So what about time for leadership from outside the United States? Right? From Southeast Asia. If the Philippines and Indonesia come together, that's a big chunk of the world. Say something to Indonesian friends. Oh my gosh, I miss you. <laughs> I miss Indonesian food. Um, I'm going to come visit. Oh okay, okay. Let's let's uh, hang out with our old friend there. Take care. Bye.